Hey guys, good afternoon from South Korea. I'm Davis. With me next, with me on my left is Megan. I'm the Australian. Megan's the Canadian, and we're here at the 28th Summer Universiade in Guangzhou. We have already had two days of competition after the opening ceremony, and it's busy to say the least. Now, Megan, I know you went out to the diving yesterday, and it was quite wet and slippery out on the pool floor. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so uh, the first event that I had the opportunity to cover was the diving finals, the one meter women's springboard, in which China captured the first gold medal of the games. And um, it was a really great competition. And following closely behind in second was Korean diver Nami Kim. And Kim was very close, but it just wasn't enough at the end on her final dive. Uh, but she captured the first medal for the host country of the Universiade Korea. So it was fantastic. Tell us a little bit about what you covered yesterday. So I went out to the archery and be warned, you don't want to get anywhere near the arrows they use. They are quite sharp and are flying long distances. So I went out in time for the men's and women's ranking rounds of the compound bow competition. There's also a recurve bow competition, but the design is a bit different. The compound bow is lighter, whereas the recurve bow is much, much heavier. And I believe the compound bow does not need as much pull strength on the draw as a recurve bow does. And in fact, two world records were broken there. So one of them was by Kibo Bay in the women's recurve competition. The previous record stood at 682 points. You can get a maximum of 720 from 72 arrows. Kibo Bay broke that by four points to get to 686. So that was one world record broken already by South Korea. The second one happened a little bit later in the day, again in a ranking round by the South Korean, I believe it was the men's recurve team, with a score that beat the previous world record by something in the range, something between one and ten points. Unfortunately, my memory escapes me. But two world records broken by South Koreans on day one makes makes South Korea, the host nation, certainly quite a joy, quite a joyful space to be in, especially in Guangzhou. Now, I know, at the, I know, at the diving. The got first gold medals. Was it of the competition or was it just of the diving there? It was actually of the competition. It was the first medal to open the Universiade, so it was quite a big deal. Um, China made their impact very, very early, especially in diving. They not only had the win in the women's one meter springboard, they also had the win in the men's three meter springboard. China again, this time Jian Feng Pen captured the gold and um, following right behind him was a Russian diver in silver. So it was a great day in the pool for China. I'm sure they'll be picking up more medals as we go along. I also decided to head out to the volleyball just to have a little bit of a watch between Russia and Thailand now. Russia is known for its tall men in volleyball, and this this was no different. It was Russia, I believe, was always going to win, but it was a great contest from Thailand. Once Russia got away, Thailand came back, but it was just a few errors from Thailand that just didn't allow them to stay in the game where Russia run three one three sets to love. Now, all of the sport is all well and good, but we had to get here first. And Megan, I know you had a bit of a trip where you wanted to to sit down and not have to deal with the stresses of trying to get down here to Guangzhou. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so obviously coming from Canada, it's almost, you know, it's across the world to get to South Korea. Um, so it's quite far. And my journey started actually in Toronto at Pearson Airport, and I had to take a flight to New York. And then from New York, I then had to hop on a flight, which was going directly to Seoul, which is the capital city of Korea. Um, I think earlier today, we had a lecturer who mentioned that it was about one million people, so quite a significant city. Um, so anyways, I had to hop on this plane to Seoul, and it's probably the biggest plane I've ever been on in my entire life. There's 10 seats wide and I had never seen anything that big and they feed you like no tomorrow. So, I mean, it was an extremely long flight. It was 13 hours, it was very, very long, um, but Asian Airlines, which we took on the way there, was wonderful and um, here I am and here we are. We finally made it, so that's really good. Uh, one of the other things is what we're doing here is we're writing for the FISU website. So. Uh, my understanding is your first article of the games was published yesterday. 
first article of the Games, yes, but we had to, from about the start of June onwards, we had to make sure we were researching we were researching stats, we were researching information, not just about our national sport, national university sports federation, so not just Australia for myself, or not just Canada for Megan, but making sure we were across what was happening at the games, who they were sending over, and making sure we got articles up on the website to, you know, to do the build up, to get the fans excited, to get the spectators excited, to get the athletes all involved. And that was a stressful process, but I think it gave us a good idea on how to do the assignments here where we have to do three per day and they have to be of human interest. We, we want to engage with people that are reading these and those human interest stories come out. That world record for the South Korea was a human interest story. So it's all about... Well, tell us yeah. a little bit about what was the story that you wrote there. Obviously they broke the world record, but what was the deeper meaning? There is it? more to it. Kibo Bay, who if we haven't mentioned, was the female recurve archer. Kibo Bay has actually come back into the Korean team and this is her first international competition for some time. So she's the oldest team member which put the pressure on her. So there's a lot of expectations around senior team members, experienced team members. You want them to be able to go out there, not just be a captain or a leader, but be a role model and help, the, help players or individuals around the court or on the archery field. But it seems that pressure might have worked for her and in the end she's taken out a world record on her way on her way to a potential gold medal that world record could fall again we don't know and this is only the first day of well now second, the second day. day of competition here so we still don't know what it's going to hold um, some of the stories that i worked on were obviously the first uh, gold medalist of the games but one of my favorite stories that i had the chance to cover before we came here when we were writing was about this canadian javelin thrower and he was from british columbia and it's quite a funny story i did i did have a bit of a laugh when i saw it you, you it's one of the more quirky but scary stories that I've read. Yes. He, he, he was something to do with sleeping in his car with an angry person. With it, yes. And actually a, um, a log wielding crazy person. For anyone who's interested, you can look more uh, into him or follow his journey at the University Ad by going into guanju2015.com and obviously you can follow us on FISU and uh, check out what articles we're doing because we'll have a lot of great ones coming up. Well, if only we have another one of those Andy White stories down yeah. here in Guangzhou. I remember reading it and thinking, oh, this is great, this is great. Um, did that just happen? But in the <laughs> end, it, is su it was such a feel-good story yeah. that it was probably all worth it in the end and it's going to be quite an experience for him to tell his grandkids <laughs> yeah. someday. Now, speaking of feel good, Guangzhou is known as the city of light and colour, even hope as well. With the University Ad slogan of Light Up Tomorrow, we see students all around the sports venues acting as leaders, acting as role models, and that's something we want to, we want to capture as well. As Megan said, you can follow all the action on FISU, you can actually see a lot of the action on online as well. It's live streaming. Eurosport's showing more than 150 hours of sport action. The FISU website is livefisu.tv, I believe, having looked yep. on Facebook. So if you want to watch, if you want to watch opening ceremony highlights, you might want to watch an archer if they've got a TV camera out there. Put one down into the bullseye. You might want to watch some of the swimming. The athlete, the athletics starts in a couple of days as well. So I'm, I'm really excited for that as. If, if, if there's one thing I have to say about the athletics is Michelle Jenicki's pre-race routine which became infamous a few years ago. Look, I'm just hoping we'll see that again just for the funny moment. <laughs> and f from both Megan and I in Guangzhou, we are having the time of our lives. It's not just about writing, it's not just about reporting, it's not even just about getting the feel-good stories. It's about the experience for us and being educated by mentors from around the world, not just journalists, but people who have been in business, foreign journalists, UN advisors who have been involved in sport for so long and understand the intricacies and those little niches mm -hmm. are giving us the little tips we need to do just to create that better story. So honestly I can't wait for the upcoming days in Guangzhou but for now we're going to head out and we're going to find some sport to watch.